Thank you for staying with us. The Nigerian government reiterated its preparedness for the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic when its first case was discovered on the 28th of February. However, a tweet by the Ministry of Finance, Budgeting and National Planning requesting, requesting for ventilators from Elon Musk, CEO of SpaceX, has brought the Nigerian government and its readiness for the fight against the pandemic into question. Is there anything we can do concerning them? And joining us to discuss this is Bola Hon, Olojede, an economist. Thank you, Bola Hon, for joining us this evening. Yeah, hi, good evening. The Federal Ministry of Finance, Budgeting and National Planning openly asking Elon Musk, CEO of SpaceX, for ventilators. What are your opinions on this, please? Yes, um, I, th I, th I think we need to go in that direction. We are a country that don't produce anything. So all those things we're going to need are adventure. Things go bad as far as COVID is concerned. We don't have them. Anybody who could provide us with anything whatsoever, whether it is testing kits, whether it is reagent, it is ventilators, whatever they can produce, if we need to prostrate and beg them, we had better start doing it now. Now, don't you, say this, yeah, but don't, you, don't you think this in a way shows how unprepared we are as a people to actually tackle this pandemic? No, we, we were not. Well, the entire world itself was not prepared. So you can imagine how, how, how unprepared a country like Nigeria is. We are not prepared. We're not ready for this. Uh, efforts have been made, and I think it's good to commend those efforts. But you know, the effort, these efforts are more like uh, reactions. They are not systemic. So as far as the system itself is concerned, uh, there's a whole lot of gaps. That's, that's the reality. All right. Now, interestingly, uh, the, f the fact is this tweet was later taken down, was deleted. Well, we just said the government was trying to hide some information as regards to the issue of his readiness to fight the coronavirus pandemic from his, from, from his citizens. Uh, well, don't also forget that the, the government also has a duty not to add panic to the existing panic. So the government is not going to go out there and say we're not ready, we're not uh, this, we're not that. No. As much as possible, they will try to roll out some comforting information. And thank God that the, some of the corporate organizations have been helping out. For example, you, we, we all heard of the uh, GC Bank uh, 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 Center you know, that, was, that was done. But, you know, we just, we just hope that things will not blow out of proportion like it has done in, uh, in Europe and in America. Otherwise, what is one, what is one hundred bed? What is two hundred bed? It, it's, it's nothing. And and that that again is a fear of many people across section of Nigerians who feel that if if this should blow over and becomes more worse than it is already, that they don't think we have the capacity to curtail this virus. In your in your opinion, what do you think the federal government as as now should be looking at and paying attention to? I, I think we need to do a lot more tests. But as we're doing the test, we must also be preparing for ICU bed spaces, the necessary equipment like ventilators. Whoever we need to talk to, we need to start talking to them. Don't forget that almost all the nations that we could turn to are overwhelmed of their own, by their own problems in their various nations right now. The entire world supply chain is in crisis because China is in crisis. So you're not so sure that even when you order, even if you have money today and you want to buy, some of those things are not even available to buy. So we must begin to make arrangements who can give us this, who can sell us this, who, you know, and, and, and be sure that we have some of those things ready. And at the same time, um, I just hope that don't, we, don't, we don't end up with situations like Europe or America because the capacity is not simply there. Now, what we're saying that, possible, yeah. let us continue to obey the prevention things, with all this hand washing and distancing, and ensure that we don't, we don't get overboard. 
Okay. Now, we're saying, we're saying increasing cases, as of today we have more um, additional cases to it. Many, many have said the NCDC is, is not quite pretty much open with its information management as regards, you know, um, what really the real situation is. How, how do you react to that? Uh, sorry, I, I didn't hear that question. What we're seeing increasing cases of, of confirmed cases. As of today, we have more cases yes. confirmed. And, and many people have argued the fact that the, Niger the Nigeria Center for Disease Control has not been quite open in the way it, ma it manages inf inf um, its information about the real situation of, th of things. What, what's your take on that? Um, I, I, th I think CDC is doing its best in the uh, resources that is available to it. Um, if, if you can't uh, do as many tests as you wish, there is definitely a problem. So they will, they will manage to do the one that they can, and they, I, I know they have put in place uh, uh, a technology platform to be able to report to us, but definitely everybody in this country today knows that we are not where we should be. Even then, I mean, I, I listened to CDC yesterday saying um, only people who are showing symptoms are the people that they are testing. But we know that with this virus, you don't even have to show symptoms before you to transmit. And that is a problem. Now, in the fight against this pandemic, many of us will describe the government as one which rules in reaction to what is thrown at it. What is your take on this regards the fight against COVID-19? Looking at it now holistically. We are reacting. There is, there is, there is no doubt about that. Um, we, we are reacting. Even things that are not pandemic, that are, that are big. Don't forget that before the pandemic uh, uh, came, came to be on the world, already dealing with Lassa hmm. And it seems to see Lassa has just totally taken a back step. Now, nobody is, is talking about them. And that is Lassa Fever that comes to us almost every year. And we see a problem dealing with that. How much more a pandemic? Now, what, what would you say this pandemic, at the end of the day, has come to our light, even furthermore to us as a people and, and the government, the federal government of Nigeria? What, what are the highlights that, at the end of the day, hoping when all of this blows over, you think critically the federal government should look into addressing? We need to now think systemically about healthcare. Healthcare is a system. What we are doing today, while we're supposed to get the best out of it, is the fact that what we're having are pockets of solutions, uh, pockets of support here and there. Forgetting that the old thing is ever to be system from the federal to the states to the local government to the private agency, the old thing should work as a single system. And that is what we need to go back to by the time this time is over. We need to rebuild from the scratch the healthcare system that is functional, that is robust, and that can deliver the mandate of health, good health care for Nigerians. Uh, interesting, you did make mention of good health care. The issue of the health budget is also an issue. Could, could you try to give us a mini analysis of Nigeria's health budget so far? Because we're actually trying to understand why the health sector of the country is still in shambles, even if the budget allot allotted to them are, are steadily increased from 2015. Uh, those, those things we call increase are, not, <laughs> are, are too small. They are, they are too tiny. The entire budget itself is too, is too tiny. You cannot touch it. We're talking of a country of 200 million people. So those, let's forget about the, those budgets. They, they, the budgets are too tiny, they cannot do anything. And the what we allocate to healthcare is also a reflection of what our priorities are. Don't forget that some, some years ago, the wife of the president has gone to the, uh, uh, the state health clinic itself, and he, she was disappointed, and he expressed it openly. It was, a, it was a press, it was an open newspaper affair. So if the state health clinic is in that state, are you surprised that the entire healthcare system is the way it is? And what has driven us this far is that the elite and the political class, even if they have a headache, they get on the plane and they're out of the country immediately. So they don't care what happens to, to, the, to the system. So maybe that's a lesson we will take away from this particular uh, pandemic. By the time this is over, we will begin to ask ourselves, 
What if there is no place to go to? Like in this pandemic, there is no place for anybody to go to. Oh, no, I, I just How will I get my health care? Oh, I, I need your reaction to, to the total and the cessation order that was passed by, on, by the president on Abuja, Ogun State, and Lagos State as one of the epicenter of this, of this um, pandemic. Now, people have argued that there were no policies in place before this order was made. And right now, many Nigerians seem to be suffering at home. Some can't really get to food. Mm. Uh, because before now, many, many people live from hand to mouth. Um, many people can't get to many of their, of their stores any longer, even pharmaceutical stores. Not until today, another express order was given that um, those people also were not, were not supposed to be on total lockdown. Do you think we were prepared for this lockdown, as it were? No, no. Um, you see, some of the things that we are copying from the outside world, we need to be able to customize it to our local environment. We need to understand our environment. So that when we bring those things, we customize it, we adapt it. So, for, for example, a, a lot of our people are in, uh, are in the informal sector. A lot of them, if they don't work in a day, they don't earn. They can't even feed themselves. So what provisions have we made to ensure that things will be smoother for those people? Those, those are some of the questions. We also know where the poor lives in Lagos. Let's, 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 let's don't deceive ourselves. We know the poor neighborhoods in Lagos. So if we really want to take some palliatives to them, we can take it across to them. Now, the special advisor, media and communications to, to Minister Yunusa Abdullahi said in a statement that the tweet was an, an unauthorized post. Do you think this makes the government look like it doesn't actually uh, know what it's doing and, and paints them in a, a pretty bad light? Oh, well, I, I, I won't say the government does not know what it's doing. I, I, I would rather say the government is a, bit, a little bit overwhelmed because it is not a prepared government. And, 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 and it's, it's, it's at various levels. Let, let's look at the information world management. Is there. Panic. Yeah. Mm. That's, let's, that's the reality. Okay. How would you score so far since the... the the emergence of this pandemic, how would you score the informa information management coming from the federal government, the NCDC, the, the Ministry of Health so far? I think the NCDC has done a great job within uh, uh, the limits of, of the resources and whatever it has to deal with. The consistency of information, the press, the press releases, updating of a, of a COVID uh, dashboard and all of that. I, I, I think they've done fairly, fairly well. But there is a whole lot more to be done. That's, 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 that's the reality. All right, also, um, the, the president's personal assistant on media, Bashir Ahmed, who was also, uh, who also appealed to Marx for assistance, refused to delete his tweet and even retweeted Smela, please. Do you think this shows that our government is divided in its strategies, going by this tweet and the plea to Mosque? Sorry, I, I, I didn't hear that. Now, the president, um, one of the president's aide on media refused okay. also to delete the tweet, even after the said tweet was deleted, and even retweeted similar. similar. You know, now, do you think this shows that our government is kind of divided in its strategies? Oh, well, it's, it, 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 even on other matters that are not as complicated and, you know, as this one, the government at the center is typically, I mean, we've seen it over and over again. One uh, media assistant will say something, another will say another person, another cabinet member will say something totally different. So it, it might even get worse in a, in a more complicated matter like the, like the COVID-19 COVID that we have right now. Now, as an economist, can you bring us up to speed and tell us globally, and, and particularly since we're a peculiar nation, how, how this has actually affected um, everything when it comes to the economy as, as a people in Nigeria and, and globally? In your analysis? Globally, um, according to the IMF, we might actually, the world might actually have entered into a recession. You have scary figures, like even in the U.S., unemployment is projected to reach about 31%. So if projection in the U.S. is meant to reach 31%, you can begin to, you can begin to imagine if we have the kind of scale that some part of the world have, what will happen to Nigeria? We are already at 20-something percent unemployment rate. 
So there is def- and we all know what has happened to oil price. Oil price today is in the 20. And there are, there are words out there that it could get to $10 per barrel. It could even be worse, depending on how the game between Russia and Saudi continue to play out and if COVID also continue to hold the world's ransom. If that should happen, we can begin to imagine as a nation that relies on oil for 90% of our foreign exchange earnings, what will be the impact or not? It's, 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 a, it's a disaster as it is right now. Uh, just before I let you go this evening, but uh, in conclusion, what do you think is pertinent and paramount for the federal government to do right now, still as, um, as measures to combat and, and curtail the spread of COVID-19 for its people and for us as, as a country? I, I, think, I think the federal government needs to um, engage re- right down to the grassroots. There's so much that someone who sits in Abuja can do. That is the reality. And the beauty of it is that we have all the levels of governance. There is the state, there is the local government. At the local government, you have councillors over the world. Can we, at those levels, begin to do a lot more on civic education, on even support for the poor? How many poor does the PMB know in Abuja that are living at my backyard in, 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 in Lagos? They don't know them. But my ward, but my ward counselor still know. He knows where everybody lives. He knows where the poor people are in my, in, my, in, my, in my ward. So we need to be able to cascade whatever we are doing from the president level right to the, to the, to the grassroots. And this is the only way we can help our people. This is the only way we can achieve a robust and effective citizen's education. Citizen education is at the heart of stopping the spread or curtailing the spread of COVID-19. All right, Bola Oloja there. Thank you very much for your time and for joining us this evening. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. And thank you for staying with us. Up next is my take. You don't want to miss it. And there is my take. The spread of the COVID-19 virus has impacted a lot of countries in a lot of ways. Many countries will never be the same after this pandemic is over and will forever remember when staying home was the responsible thing to do. Nigeria is not exempted from those list of countries as its cases of the virus has risen to 174. Now, a lockdown is in place in three states, but I believe its enforcement could be better. Now, while the government is still trying to protect its nation from a full-blown outbreak, it must also understand that a lot of people are living in poverty and have nothing to sustain themselves during the lockdown. This is not a time for security operatives to bully or severely punish the defaulters of the lockdown. There shouldn't even be a time for that. But more than ever before, this period is the right time for that. I urge the government to caution security operatives to disease from this act, as I believe most civilians will not act this way for no reason. I also urge religious leaders to abide by the rules of the land, because this is also not the time for insurrections. We will defeat this pandemic together. And for the tweet by the Ministry of Finance, hack or not, I believe the funds of Nigeria has been mismanaged over the years, which is why we seem to be heading for a health emergency. And if countries like the United States and Italy are still battling with this, where do we begin from if we can't seem to get ventilators? I believe this could have been avoided if our resources were properly managed. I urge the government to take better care of all its sectors after this pandemic comes to an end so it doesn't repeat itself again. And that's my take. Thank you for watching the program. Until next time, be well.